Hello, I'm Madeline Tynan from the Tynan Motor Group and I'm here with Troy Phillips from First Point. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. Lovely to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. Another amazing local business that we're going to be talking to today to empower you. How did you get hit with this horrible virus? What happened in business? Well, I think uh, is it, it could be day 35 of lockdown, but memory was it was about four weeks ago, I think. Mm, we sort of got a bit of a whiff of it six yeah. weeks ago, and then we, you know, typical Australians, we and didn't I think, think it was going to be so hard. On the Sunday, we got inundated with Scott Morrison, and I think everybody took it pretty seriously. Like we'd, we'd heard about it, it wasn't going to affect mm. us, so we were mm. all going to go to the football, we were willing to shake hands and go to restaurants. And on that Sunday, I think we realised it, uh, it was real, and people started to change the way they were. Offices were shut down, people worked from home. And I think through that week, it, um, it got pretty real when, mm. um, and mm. when they started to close pubs and clubs and in the hospitality industry, I think people stood up and took notice. Mm. Um, from there on, it's, um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, nothing we've ever seen before. Troy, did your phone go nuts? Obviously doing people's mortgages and then with their businesses, everyone sort of went, okay, where do we step? What do we do? First thing we did in here is ring our bank and sort of start looking at our mortgages in, for our own family. Did your phone go nuts with people wanting to do that? Yeah, it did. We've, got a, we've, got a, a, we've been doing the shy for 13 years mm. or 14 years now. So um, on that Monday, it was... Um, I've never seen anything like it, and I've been through a GFC, you know, yes, uh, yeah. you know, a banking royal commission, and a lot of other things. But it was actually real because it wasn't it wasn't affecting corporates, it wasn't affecting big banks or, mm, or the everyday it, person. It was really. people who were worried about paying their mortgage. It was big, big businesses that were good businesses that revenue was reduced from you know 100 percent down to 10 percent. Trying to work out what they did, so it was uh, it was I've never seen anything like it. The phones did the were, banks reach out to you too to say like? You know, like your, yeah. you, you've got Macquarie, you've got St George. Yeah, we do, with all, we do with all the major banks. I've got to say, the Australian banks really stood up. They're in a really strong position because of the, you know, the Royal Commission. Mm, mm. And I think for the first time ever, they've been fantastic corporate citizens. Um, you know, the Commonwealth Bank, while they were bashed pretty heavily, you know, a year ago, they've really stepped up to look after their clients and all the other banks have as well. Um, so have I think, most people put them on hold? Is that the way they're moving not, not or, most people, or just getting ready? I think a lot of people, if they can, are still paying their mortgage yes. because it's when you're on hold, the interest capitalises. So if people have still got a job and they can afford it, nothing's changed. For people that have actually been stood down, which is a new word, whoever heard of the word stood yeah, down, it was, um, I've been stood down or had their salaries reduced significantly. I think we've worked with them to put their mortgages on hold for three months at the start and then look at doing it for um, six months. Plenty of uh, businesses and large businesses, we've had to go in and renegotiate the terms of their agreements with the banks. Mm. Banks have been fantastic. I, I can't believe how they've been inundated with hardship claims and even the, the small business um, claims. And I can't believe they've managed it so well. The major thing I've been seeing in business is that one business is reaching out to another business to say, hey, are you OK? Yeah. And that seems to be the way that we've done it. Have you had to stand down any of your staff that way? or, or? No, we, we made a... Um, we made it uh, a bit of a commitment on the way through that we wanted to, that we wanted to sort of keep it business as usual. We didn't want to have customers in the office. We obviously had the social distancing, but we we, we adapted to um, mm. technology that we would have probably yes. gone to five years ago. We embraced within about uh, five days, so that's worked well. All the lenders we deal with have gone to doing um, online, online identification, etc. So mm. that's worked really well. So it's almost we've become a hybrid. We actually do a lot of stuff digitally now that we would have like like the relationship. We're a relationship business like you guys. Yes. But we've embraced that, so it's worked well for people that needed to speak to us ASAP, needed to do things ASAP. Digital signatures, et cetera, have become the norm instead of like, oh, what's mm. this? How do I use it? Everybody's mm. using that. So we embraced that pretty quickly, and we had to. As far as other businesses go, it was more about looking after the people that needed help straight away. So you prioritise people because there was people that, you know, you look at the airline industry, a lot of the people in the Shire were employed in the airline industry yes, and, and travel. Yes, big, that was, that was hit really hard. Mm. Mm. I'm also involved in um, in the hospitality industry as well. So that was an industry where we, we tried to keep everybody employed to a certain point. Um, so you're, you, pardon me, just interrupting you, but you've got, you're involved in a pub. I'm involved in a pub as well. I, you know, I don't get to pour beers. I spent a lot of time standing <laughs> on the other side of the bar. So I was, uh, I was good at that. That's interesting. It's been hit heavily, but I think the job keepers been able to help businesses keep people attached in the, in the hospitality industry and keep those businesses to be able to run their payroll still. Yes. I mean, it doesn't cut in until the 1st of May. But the, Did you have internationals working for you? We, in... And that's the sad thing. We did have a lot of internationals right. working for us. We've got uh, three particularly that we've kept the bottle shop going and kept a takeaway service going. But whilst that's innovation, 
it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay. Doesn't the, pay the bills. No. It, it makes you feel good, but eventually it. Uh, We've got to have a solution. It's the Balmain Hotel in Balmain. So when we open up, come down there. Come it's got down, a beer garden. It'll be a great place to see you. But um, that's just an industry that's... We've got a lot of customers in the hospitality industry as well, pubs and that sort of stuff. And, and as we were talking about before we went to camera, the clubs and that sort of stuff, the big league clubs and everything else, they, they do a lot for the community. They put a lot back. They're they do. hurting. They do a lot of And they employ a lot of people. Yep. yep. And a lot. they help a lot for not-for-profits as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%. Too. While some people think it's going to go back and be one big party, like, you know, when we're on the Olympics or mm -hmm. the America's mm -hmm. Cup or you know, New Year's Eve, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be a different world we go back yeah. into. I think the word coming out in that is is the taking out tables, between tables, social distancing, bigger tables so they can have a distance around each one. So yeah. if you had 100 in your, in your restaurant, it'll be down to 50. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, being served by someone with a face mask on that can't interact, I, I think the whole experience is going to be a little bit different. So your business, obviously, with the mortgage broking, etc., have you noticed a downturn in people actually asking for new mortgages? Would you say there's a downturn? I know they're saying between 20 and 30 percent that it's going to hit the uh, real estate industry. Yeah, Is I, that what you're seeing coming through? I think we match that. I think we match the real estate industry. I think that the, uh, the world has, I mean, I, I don't think now's the time to sell and push because I think people want reassurance. So your job's to service your existing clients and service ones that are committed to buying a property. There's still people buying. I think a lot of first homeowners um, are still buying property. Right. Um, and I think the real estate agents are better to, better to tell you about that, but they've had an approval there and they've gone in and they've bought. Um, they're not in industries that are at risk. Right. Um, and I suppose they're young enough to think, well, if anything happens, I can bounce back. I've got, yeah, I've you know, got, time. I've got three more cycles in the world to get through it. Mm. Um, you, you obviously cater not just for the St George and Sutherland area. Have you noticed in the outer areas of Sydney that we're different in any way, we, being in the St George and Sutherland area? I think we've been, um, I think we've been hit a little bit harder because a lot of our people are involved in the hospitality industry and they're involved in the travel industry at the at the mm. bare bones. Mm. Whether it's um, you know airlines, whether it's air transport, whether it's um, you know they're involved in um, pubs and clubs. So I think it has it, it's hit us. I think we're a more entrepreneurial area. A lot more people in the Southern Shire, uh, they're willing to have a go. That's right. They're and a lot of people own their own businesses and yeah. have come up from nothing. And, yeah, 100%. And, and we've built some, there's some magnificent stories like, you know, you guys are one of, you know, the, the Tyner Motor Group, and that's not just because I'm sitting in front of you, but there's a hundred there's a hundred of those stories and you just look around Tarrant Point of family built businesses. Oh, definitely. That have been built on, on the back of a, an idea like two generations ago. Mm. And I think... Mm. Um, they didn't cater for this, and they're not—they're not massive corporates. So this is this is hurting them, and it's well, I tend to, you tend to run lean and mean anyway. One hundred percent. Most most of the family-owned businesses or, or um, the entrepreneurs within the Shire tend to run pretty lean. We're not yeah. sort of big flashy businesses. No. We tend to just run lean and mean. But I think that also means that we can manoeuvre quicker. Yeah, I think we can. I think, and I think the staff are loyal. The staff feel like it's mm. a family, so they're willing to understand if, you know, if you go and have a chat to them about this is what we need to do. Mm. They realise it's tough, and I think, I think staff are generally really realise and they appreciate they've got a good business they work in. They're not in a corporate where they just put a line through them. Mm. They want to be a part of it, and they understand it's tough times. So I think they're lifting as well. So how are you keeping those lines of communication open to your staff? Like, are they all working from home, or are they coming in? Are they sharing? What are they doing? We have some that work off site, and we have people in the office working. We've got a pretty good workspace for that. So um, I think it's I think it was important to try to keep you know being banking and finance was an essential service. I think it was important to try to get people coming in and communicating, mm. not just about work but about their situation. Because my my thought was psychologically, if someone was at risk, they 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 weren't to come in, but. I think psychologically it was good to have people coming in because everybody's having, you know, as yes, we, we discussed, yes. like, I think last Wednesday it sort of hit me. I was missing, I'm a social beast and I was, I was flat as a biscuit. I was missing my, you know, a fortnightly Chinese and a couple of beers with the industry pe people to catch up with some chat. That's right. I think that's the thing that's I That's where a lot the, of business is done, I, I, really. Yeah, I miss the most is the interaction with people. Mm, mm. And you can call them on the phone or when you're in the car or when you're at the office to get updates, but I think I'm, I'm missing the social interaction. So in going forward, I mean, there's got to be something that's empowering us and making us want to be better for when we come out of this. Yeah. At the moment, you've changed a lot of different things, obviously going online, um, you've got two children working from home, adult children. Um, what do you think you're going to take out of it to become a better business and a better business leader when we come out? Like, hopefully we'll come out slowly um, in, a big, in a big way, slowly but big way. What, what do you think you'll take out of it? I've always expected, like, always say to people, when it's too good to be true, it generally is. And, you know, you and I have seen some some pretty big downturns. Mm. Um, the GFC didn't affect Australians generally day to day, but it affected our big banks and it was managed well by the government. 
at the time in you know 09, 08, 09. I think um, you've got to expect that it won't just be a financial change or anything else that affects business. Um, something like a pandemic, which none of us would have looked at. It was always like, what are interest rates? What's the Australian property market? Australians are very interested in property and interest. Mm. Um, and I was talking to a young fund manager and I said, something's going to give here. I just had a gut feel that something was going to give. I never thought it would be a pandemic. Mm. And when it hit, it hit fast and it's affected everything very globally. Fast. It's affecting a lot of businesses. Um, you know, Virgin for, for once was probably, you know, a business that was carrying too much debt anyway. It was always going to always going to struggle and it'll come back out because we need another airline. But I just think you've got to expect the unexpected. Um, when it is too good to be true, it generally is. You know, yes. I always look at it and say, look, when you look next door and there's pretty average people and they're overperforming, it's, the market's generally pretty good because good companies will do well and do better in good, good, good business. Yes, definitely. You, know, uh, you notice that with your own staff too. Yeah. The ones that, you know, that when, it, when you've got a great product and it's selling yeah. hot and it's hot and then when it goes off, the cream always rises to the top. 100%. I think you find that Staff will appreciate to work in a good environment. It won't just be about what are you going to pay me, what are you going to do, there'll be loyalty. And employers will realise the staff that lifted throughout this and they, they go, you, you know what, I always take someone who's, uh, you know, they've got seven really good points out of ten, but you know you can, you can mm. master the other three, they can improve those areas, but they're going to be there through thick and thin and that, that you know what you've got. Mm. Then the, the, the ten out of ten that you know, you, then you know you might get three or four years, but they're never going to be there for the long term. Mm. Um, so I think it's going to change the way people appreciate having a role in Australia. I think jobs, when you've got un unemployment at under 5%, anybody can leave a job and come back and take it. Mm. So I think people would appreciate their job. They'll take more pride in the corporation they work for. I think Australians lost that, that they weren't proud of their company, they weren't proud of their industry or anything else. Mm. They took it for granted because I can just leave and come back. And I think we're going to change and we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of loyalty and a bit more, bit more pride in what we do and, and how we do it. Mm. And I think for us, it's just, you know, I've always... You know, I, I envy that the, the Tynan brand and you know, some of the other local brands you talked about in the Southern Shire. For me, it's just as I walk out the door and pass the keys to, to someone else, I want that our brand grew through this and came out. And You've got three facets, though. You've got your mortgage broken. Yeah. So that seems to be just get down, knuckle down and work through it. You've kept your yes. staff on. Then I know you sit on a board. Has that been so, okay. dealt differently? Well, boards have had a lot of time to get on Zoom calls and talk about a whole lot of stuff. Right. It's, um, there's a lot more about risk mitigation because they are worried about the you know identity theft and a whole lot of other stuff. And so, but, explain that board a little bit. Is that a not for profit? Uh, yeah, no. no, I'm involved in it. Funnily enough, I'm involved in a not for profit for brain cancer as well. And we had it's it's, it's hit not for profits for six, and I think it's going to yes. you, you, they're going to have trouble getting any events done between now and Christmas. Do you think your your two children understand? The, this is just so important for our future to get this right. And do you think they'll be different 20-year-olds uh, plus coming out of this? Do you think that they'll take something out of this? Obviously, you've started your business on your own. You've worked your absolute backside off to get to where you are now. And you've used thinking right in a 360-degree program to look at this and look at that and da-da-da. Do you think your kids are going to come out of this in a different way? I hope they were pretty level-headed and they, they would have thought about others first and they would have thought about, you know, what if this didn't happen because it's all like life's sliding doors. So hopefully they had a, you know, they had a good view on the world, um, not an entitled view, um, and I'm, I know they do. They have a good view on the world. But um, I think they're going to come out of it now and realise, gee, being able to go to the pub with your mates and being able to do things that you want to do when you want to do them is a, is, a, is a privilege, not a given. I think they're going to realise that, you know, it, it's... Maybe, maybe now you can't just goof off for a year and come back and rebuild. It's, um, mm. The days of jumping on a plane and just going overseas for two years might not be around for a long time and coming back to a job that's there or any other job. Mm. So maybe you're going to have to have more of a plan these days in concrete because we've had such a good run. Um, that will be different. You're going to have to have a plan. Um, as I keep saying, I said Aladala and Molly Mook are going to be like the Greek islands for the next two years at holidays. And I think the simple holiday going up the coast, maybe, you know, the Gold Coast and Noosa are going to be things that you really enjoy doing for two weeks of the mm -hmm. year. Because I think international travel um, is going to be a slow burn to get back to those overseas holidays that people were taking all the time. Mm. Um, I think people are spending more time at the dining room table eating together and talking about things and having, a, having a chat on weekends. And there's no rugby league or AFL or anything to watch on TV. So... Um, Maybe it's back to the days of like what the 80s used to be like. And well, it has to get back sooner or later because I have uh, twins due in August and a wedding due in August. So we've got to get back then. Well, it could be a cheap one if you're only allowed to have 10 people at the wedding. So it could be, 
<laughs> could be good timing for if exactly you, know, you might right. have to do a party afterwards. But uh, when do you think it's all going to? Um, have you got an inside word? Because I don't. No, I don't. I don't think anyone's got the inside word. I think it gets down to Australians being good Australians and hopefully containing this virus the way we are, keeping mentally healthy, um, healthy within your body so that you can look at business in a different way and hopefully look outside the square and maybe create a new business within your business or just make sure that you're looking after your staff that when you come out of this that we're all one team. I think that's really important. Um, I don't know when it's going to end, but talking to people like you make me feel inspired to make sure that we do the right thing within the community as well. Mm. And Troy, thanks so much for no, coming No thanks for having us. me, Madeline. It's been really an eye-opener with so many balls in the air that you've yeah, got. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? We've got so much going on. I, I will say, though, I, I spoke to a very large business that said, well, we're tr keeping all our major staff on, but we're giving them a paintbrush and saying, get out there and, and paint whatever you've got to do and help whatever you can. Uh, and I think that's what we're doing within our community. And yeah, thank you good. very much. No worries. Appreciate thank it. You.